Hello, this is Haku Dabin, and I'm here with another bit of, of something from the SCP End of Death canon. I believe this is going to be the end of Season 1 before we get into Season 2 of End of Death. I can try to say it, but it'll probably sound really bad. I'm just gonna call it. Wait. Bet. No. Etab Po C H two O Q H S P R N Pain. Well, I don't know what any of that means, but let's get into this. Seems to be a conversation. of some sort. I must say, I've never had such a young client before, Mr. Fendrel. Still haven't. We've met before, Marbury. No, it's quite clear in the records. I've never met you before, or Mr. Fendrel. Perhaps I worked with, with a friend or a relative with a different surname a few years ago in an an imbecilic man who dumped all his money into one stock came to you for assistance. His name was Green. Gregory Green, I remember. I take it you work or have worked with him? When he came to your office, he had his entire portfolio inside a single folder. Back then, you only had a walking stick. Green stood here, right here, and timidly pushed the folder to you. Your exact words were, Jesus, look at you! What are you doing? Mindberry, Arthur Fendrel is just a nice little change that I use nowadays. Between you and me, I am green. I see what this is. You could not have picked a worse person to impersonate. None of us may be dying, but none of us are getting younger either. Green was 10 years my senior and had failing in lungs, mortar, ardent teeth, and a reenactment of the a Bolshevik revolution occurring in his liver. I have a picture of her health, and look here. I even got on my teeth whitened. Mr. Fendrel, I don't know how your sense of humor works, but let's talk somewhere else. You're per aspiring. How about we discuss all sorts of lovely things at that coffee shop down the street? The one that sells those club sandwiches you like so much. The one where you convinced me to invest in the pharmaceutical business. If I'm leading you along, then all you lose is time. A null concept now. But if not, I'll make your New Year's resolution really something to remember. I do not know how to say any of that. Cycled home one late at eight on evening with the cold... With the, uh, the cloud smothered sun beckoning her to sleep while the uh, rocks and, uh, and fissures spread over a road. What kept her awake and steady? Hang on. Problem just occurred. One that isn't supposed to happen. One that knows very well that's not allowed to start. What kind of stop don't you get? Anyway, back to the story. The bottle of pills in her backpack out the whole journey back home, but the bag of maggots bounced about silently. Okay, why does she have a bag of maggots? That's interesting. 
The Croatian winter was deceptive and, and wretched. Krasimera felt warm in her sweater, but the wind nipped through the e a concierge uniform underneath. Home was a concrete brick shaped structure with carved ar ar niches serving as windows and a single staircase to the top, so steep that it felt more like climbing a slide. Kashmir uh, found her apartment, which is why I'm going to say from now on because I can't pronounce it properly and I don't know if I am pronouncing it right or not. It was the one with the scent of perfume, rotting flesh, and scrambled eggs filling out from beneath the door. The apartment had mosquito coils burning on every table and by every wall. The lights were off. A saucepan sat on a low flame in the kitchen. Chris Eshmero's father came out of the bedroom, eyes like those of a corpse, smelling like a dug-up grave. Where have you been, child? he asked. Have you been drinking? No, father. It was a bad day at, at the hotel. I'm tired. Kashmir moved to set her bag down, and her father scrambled to the table, putting his hands to the wood and leaning himself over to Lear. You're tired. Your mother sympathizes. She spent the last few hours being foul scooped out of her. Where's your replacement? Kashmir fished out the antibiotics and met medicinal maggots and handed them over. Her father snatched them away and scampered into the bedroom again. He left stains of black bile over Kashmir's hand. The refrigerator was mostly full of eggs. They were cheap and full of protein. Kashmir washed out the saucepan her father had left, but going on the stove, and broke four eggs into it, followed by butter, milk, and salt. He started to make sure until it was screaming yellow all around. And more still until it was chunky and gooey. Dinner. Kashmira! Her father roared, jumping out of the room. What is this? It looks like the receipt, father. Kashmira said. They've been giving them out of source for quite a while now. Did you look at the price? Did you even think? Why was it so expensive? No fa new pharmacy clerk, father. I'll try to negotiate a better price, but can I please eat? Fine. Eat, sleep, drink. I'm not saying that word. I'll be staying up, keeping this roof. Keeping what, father? Kashmir turned in her chair. Keeping mother comfortable. Her kidneys have failed and her heart doesn't pump blood. How comfortable do those extra pills make her? How confident are you when you flush our savings into the doctor who only has one thing to say when he looks upon that corpse? Watch your tone, girl. He tells me to watch my tone. Mother's body is dead. And you treat her as though she only has a flu. And if you could have just as wait, wait just a little, I could have finished my education and got an actual paying job. Kashmir took hold of her plate and hurled out the wall behind her. He looked at her. His eyes spoke. Yes, try even reaching for a refrigerator and see what gets broken next. He couldn't stop her from eating the egg already on her fork. And she chewed it slowly. She let her father turn off the stove and went to her room. She changed out of her uniform and into sleeping clothes. Setting her Mira name tag aside. Oh, wow, yeah, that's way easier to say. With the blanket pinned be between the wall and the back of her head, Gretchen Mira as went through her phone for any emails. She saw a lot of rejections as usual, but there was something else. It was stuck between the rejection notices from the photography studio and the artist school. It was some sort of paid modeling internship. I shouldn't be getting these, she thought. I dropped out. But when she opened it, she saw that it wasn't an invitation to apply. It was just an invitation. <sighs> and when we first came here, the waitress sat at us down in a booth over there. The one by the corner where those two bovine hags now sit. We did. If you still aren't convinced, I do happen to remember what we ate as well. No, no, no. That's... How can this, this be? What have you done to yourself, Green? Is this plastic surgery?
Now that's a market I would not in recommend getting in investing in. If anything, you at least have, have that bit of foresight to give your clients now. Then how? Hold that thought. Waiter incoming. Tenderloin? The maggots must be hungry today, Marberry. I get right to the point. I didn't know what the fuck I... Well, there I go dropping the F-bomb. Well, there goes the channel. Goodbye, everyone. No, it's okay. I don't know what the heck I was doing before. I always thought you stock uh, broker types were slamming weasels with champagne bottles up your bums and cocaine where most people have not nostril hairs. But I'd be worse off than you are now uh, if I hadn't taken your advice. I owe you for this. All of this. I'm not just take, talking about the Italian sports we drove over here in. I'm talking about all of this. From the fingers I'm holding in this fork with to the working taste buds that I'm enjoying this food with. I owe you, and I'm gratefully here to cut you in on what I've been getting. You haven't told me what it is. It's real estate. Free in your case. A new home for you. For the rest of however long you want to last. I'm talking about moving your brain into a body that isn't so globally. Er, and I say that kindly. Excuse me? A little less excitement, please. We'll continue after the... Arctic way to wait I step out at water. Jesus, look at you. Kashmir <sighs> didn't tell her father that she was leaving. As far as she was concerned, she was already on her way to the trapping dock with the hotel for defending herself against and Sweet Twelve's occupant. It was good that she didn't tell her father, she thought. He'd have yelled at her for turning down the money. She threw together a pack containing water and some boiled eggs and her passport. She also brought her Arcanti uniform with her. If only so her father would think she was at work until she didn't and return. Leaving the house was sickening. The mosquito coils had burned out and the stench coming from the bedroom made her gag until tears rolled down her cheeks. She couldn't imagine how her father could sleep in there. When she arrived at at the of, of Nick, International Airport, the egg in her pocket had, had been crushed into goo. The sun was setting and starching the sky into a musky orange, and Kashmira was pedaling her bicycle just a little faster than most people were walking. She sold the bike to a tourist, threw the concierge roll uniform into a trash can, and bought some water. She was breathing like a choked fish. The muscles in her legs felt like broken branches scraping against her, her nerves. And she was rather sweaty. They'll take a look at me and send me away, Kashmir, I thought. I did not return home to father without a job and as a runaway. She pulled her stuff into one of the bathrooms. It was unoccupied. Kashmir pulled shampoo, conditioner, and soap out of her backpack and let water flow out of the tap. Logged the drain with one palm and waited until the water all before dunking her head inside. Deeper inside the terminal, Kreshmira saw a tall man holding up a laminated sign bearing the logo of the inter internship program. Hot all around him were or the other interns. They all looked handsome and pretty, almost dressed up for a runaway. Kreshmira had changed out of her clothes she sat cycle all over in, but she looked absolutely atrocious comparatively. She walked up to the tall man and he, and he told his head straight down at her. His eyes were hidden behind aviators. Your name is Kreshmira Kovacevic, yes? He asked in poor creation. Yes. The tall man sat down to sign and pulled a notebook out of his suit. Kreshmira couldn't see what he was looking at, but she felt his lethargic gaze jump between her and whatever was written down. He made no more to the book, but let her say on the condition that she tidy up more, be more before leaving. She was not the only one giving the same instructions. The restaurants closest to the a group were all crowded with other interns. Some of them were a bit older than her, maybe graduate students, and others looked like they weren't even out of high school yet. She stood next to one in front of the mirror, a truly impish girl that looked as though she was wrenched out of a fairy tale. The girl saw Kashmira standing there with nothing but a comb. Forgot your things? Don't have things, Kashmir said. 
The girl offered her own, own kit and stood by while uh, Krishmira worked. The child's name was uh, Veselka. Her parents were the ones who received the invitation and were all too happy to graduate ate her from kitty pageants. What are we doing? We're just flying over there, aren't we? We meet the designers once we touch down. Some of the older models are saying that there is a full wardrobe on board, too. And that we're doing our first photo shoot on the tarmac, Vasilka said nervously. Older models? How old are you? Sixteen. Kashmira returned to her eyeliner. She couldn't re remember where in life if she was doing her first shambling year at the academy. <sighs> this is my fourth one now. The first was exciting, but a mistake. The body was clean shaven in the photograph, but genetically it sprouted hair like a plant seed on steroids. The second was fine, but also had a bad genetic history that yeah, I didn't want to gamble with. The third was great, my favorite. It was a full package of excellent health, looks, and genes. You would change my name just to truly get that new life experience. Bad Gar X and changed that. Quite her repairably, too. Tragically. But I opened my eyes to what I've been missing all this time. Now this is new. This is exhilarating. Oh, don't, don't play the human to Aaron, my Ed Barry. They've got. Oh wait, where do you get the bodies? Clone rats? The itri dishes? Oh, don't play the human to the humanitarian and Madbury. They've got hospital wings full of people like you. Decaying corpses that still feel on the inside. They pour maggots inside you to nibble away at the at that flesh. I hear you can actually feel the spoon dig into you as all the, the adult flies and pay chunks are scraped up. Stop that, I'll lose my appetite. Your stomach ruptured years ago. Moby Dick, no offense. I'm offering you a restart. I'm offering you decades, almost an entire lifetime to start over with. You can pick up a new hobby. You can start a new job. You can even surprise a wife. I'm willing to offer her the same deal if you want. We both want to renew your wedding vows. We don't talk much anymore. Because your body is dead, Marbury. It's exactly what I'm talking about. This is why I'm offering... This is why what I'm offering you should have you bouncing out of your seat. I'm... I'm... Is that blood? Are you alright? Waiter! Waiter! Water, please! Did whatever that was also come with the body? <sighs> Everyone has the same deal. There is a pill, O Regiment. A very strict one. I've been in your crappy shoes, so... Or that you'll hardly consider it pain. Just remember to take them before bed or in cases of discomfort. Exciting. Isn't it? Are you interested or are you not? Why do you get the uh, bodies? Fine. This is a corporate secret, but you use cleaning vets. Get DNA samples from donors, tweak the genes, and grow fresh by its program to create an empty brain instead of one that thinks. You catch... That's my meaning. Swap it out with yours and poof. That's a relief. There's no problem then. How much? A few million. Although it will Aries. But not for you. First one's on the house. My treat. Here's the URL. That's where it, or, or, Well, mine is, uh, is Lazarus. Capital OL. Followed by the at symbol and two sevens. 
Use my tablet, but I keep it angled away from the rest of the coffee shop. If the portrait is grayed out, then the body is unavailable. Someone got to it first for a health issue, or health issue was discovered. Golden frame is premium, but that doesn't apply to you. On the house and all that. Click one and you'll get the full or genetic and aesthetic like readout. Not to mention a really nice gallery of photographs as to feed the imagination. Handsome fellas, seven feet tall, iron hair, no genetic history for disease. There's another catalog here. What's the password? That's not really... I want to look. What's the password? I can use that catalog, but I can get you signed up. We'll have it tonight, weirdo. Thank you. However, if I may, we have the technology to genetically alter these bodies, then it would be more profitable to allow for customer customization, as opposed to just selling a variety of presets. We're working on that. There really was a full wardrobe on the plane. Kashmir stepped out, out onto American soil, accessorized ice and runway ready. They took her photo and sorted her out, and the other interns into groups. Kashmir watched Miss Selka get sorted into the group opposite, and they, they got into the bus's head for different boutiques. Kashmir and her group arrived at the fashion studio, Ventral and Danes in West Virginia. It was certainly fancy. Ventral and Danes had a runaway and operational staff of designers, seamstresses, photo photography studios, prop departments, lighting ink personnel, and obviously translators who scared it about like mice. A tall man put them them all into different duties. Kashmir was assigned to a team of designers and photographers. They posed all day and cycled through every facial expression there was. Runway walks were treated almost like fitness exams, and there was even a small platoon of nurses and mags on hand and to treat and randomly inspect them. At night, they were all checked into a nearby hotel and given a very cheerful allowance. For the next few weeks, Kashmir felt as though she was doing an abnormal amount of work for a model, and no work at all as an intern. Day in and day out, she was doing photo shoots, fittings, and walks. With a peculiar frequency, she was also inspected by physicians who checked out everything from her eyesight to her blood. The days often ended with her exhausted and eager to sleep. On the other hand, she was also learning near nothing. There were no senior models to offer tips or education on the subject, and the whole thing began to stink ink the more fendral and names in sweetened the pot. All the interns were given hotel rooms and cell phones, with staff already listed in as contacts. The little allowance that they all got was too generous to be an actual ways. H. They felt like bribes. There's something wrong here, Bojan. Oh no. Mira, don't tell me you also think this is a scam. At it's all the time I'm at school, it was I, Kashmir, will be on the cover of this magazine and that magazine, but now it's fishy? But Navak was throughout length lengthwise over the of his sofa. He was a handsome person now, but he wasn't always. Back when he still attended classes, he slouched, had glasses, brown eyes, and smiled that but make the yellow sun envious. Now he looks ready to put the digital touch-up industry out of business. Even his teeth seemed in bleach whiter than snow. Think about it. We have one figure of authority, the tall American. The designers make variations of the same dress as in suit over and over again. And if they don't do that, they're using material from others. Look here. Listen from that, that show. Project Runaway from years ago. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's the same gown I wore today, Bojan. You were in a photo shoot with it today. Mira. Bojan threw his hands up. This is a crap brand that can't pull a decent and, and design out of it. It's about to save its life. But it's real. Look here. Give me your phone. 
Use your own. It's not even yours, silly. Fine. See here? Ventral and Danes and unveils an ugly tapestry of Richard and unoriginal designs at Fashion Week here in New York. Blah blah blah, Federal and Danes accuse of plagiarizing Hugo of Boss Lamb's suits. Cease and desist in force. Blah blah blah, Federal and Danes is a, is a dumpster, but it's desperate for talent and we're desperate for a way into the industry. This is how it's desperate but beautiful people help each other, you see? We don't get by, ahead by seeing a helping hand and, not, and questioning if it's real. Kashmir wanted that to be true. The lobby they were sitting in had red carpets and golden trims. It was a palace, and they looked like they belonged, wrapped up in designer, of it, it rip off threads, and all made up by the grant. And staircase, the hotel staff was even beginning to put up a Christmas tree that nearly reached the crystal chandeliers. If it was all a scam, then she was going back to Croatia to her father. If not, Kashmira had dug her phone, her old one out of her purse. She checked her bank account. Her wages were there. They were real. They didn't retreat into the et electronic ether et when she made purchases or sent lumps of summons back home. It was real money. She closed out of her banking app and saw her recent calls log. The number of calls from home had reached the hundreds. She didn't even open the text to read what was inside. Her father would likely have thrown in some pictures of Mother's Punisher to show her how bad things had gone. He should be using the of money he was sending her. He should be. Bojan offered to take a drinking with some of the other interns to get the true American experience. He may not have looked like the best old run away a hopeful from college anymore, but his actual self, or at least the amount of respect he had for his labor, had preserved. Had persevered, I mean. Also, since they're in America, they actually uh, should be at least 21 before they start drinking. Anyway, let's continue. It's me. Mudberry, do you know what time it is? Tell me about the procedure. Tomorrow morning, over coffee. No. Is it surgical? Is it safe? What happens to my old body? Are you absolutely sure that the clones don't have brains? This is the first two. What happens to your body is up to you. You could turn it into a tree if you freaking want. Or you could bury it. Man, no one falls for that anymore. As for the clone brains, what, you think we have a big garbage can leave all the hood brains here or something? You think we wrap up all our spare brains and spare our Walmart bags and watch a garbage truck load them up for the landfill? Good night. I've made a decision. Wonderful. Over coffee. I text you the photo. What do you think? Oh, for frick's sake, my Barry. What's wrong? Nothing. It's just... Well, I mean... You have a good eye for RSX. Can I ask why? Sure, it's like you said. This might I very well be my only one. I've seen the prizes, so why have more of the same? Why simply do a reset where you could switch to an entirely new system? Think of the entire new slate of experiences, opportunities, pleasures that would come with this. Don't get too giddy on me, you schoolgirl. I'm sorry. It's just the more I think about this, the more excited I am. You're absolutely sure this is safe, right? Bodbury, I don't think you're an ever to clear enough. Please speak louder. Scratch coffee tomorrow. Come to my place. We'll finalize everything there. And I even bring the operating doctor. I'm sorry. It's just overwhelming. Thank you again and truly for this. Good night. Kashmir left the bar for some fresh air. She was standing and with her winter coat wrapped around her, watching the wisps of vapor or that danced out of her lips get torn apart by the shoulders of street goers passing by her. To her left, a little Santa rung his bell in front of a cast iron pot. For all her talk, Kashmir understood none of it. She kept her head down and her, and her hair 
and rescue by habit. Something she picked up from her childhood and the grip. I don't think I said that right, but please correct me in the comments. Then she heard, there was a screech, human or tired, she didn't know, that pulled every face towards the road. A dozen brake pedals were slammed in unison, and the smell of burnt rubber burrowed into Kreshmira's nose. There was the sound of metal bending, shattering and cracking, and, and, and laborious groan of heavy material falling into the ground. Over the line of pause for pedestrians, Kreshmira saw glass and a car bumper fly through the air. Then it was all quiet, and the crowd began switching their phones away from the cameras and, and to the 911 dial. Well, Jan and the others came out of the bar tipsy from drink and curious to see. They forced themselves through the crowd, Kreshmira following in their wake. It was a car accident. A truck, one of those mammoth 18-wheelers, had skid into an intersection. A few SUVs and sedans had plowed into its side, but the damage wasn't too bad. She could see some of the drivers wandering out of a sports car, telling by the looks of it. It was low enough to the ground that when it sped, and up into the truck, its bottom half had slid right underneath it, the truck while the hood was sheared off. Kashmir saw most of the car sitting idle on the, on the other side of the truck. And she saw the driver. Some of the unlockers began to notice too, and Kashmir felt dizzy as the, as the screams as began. The body was wearing a suit, but its tie had fallen down to the waist. There was nothing left. There was nothing from the neck up, and the suit was glistening red. Behind the truck, up by the scrunched up of roof of the sparked car, there was head on a pavement with bits of metal embedded in its forehead. Its mouth opened and closed. A fish ripped from the water, and its eyes started around frantically. She saw the pupils lock on her group, on Bojan, and she quickly pulled him away. Well, Bojan escorted the... He's still shaking Chris Mirror back to the hotel. But well, Ojan back, back to his room was swaying from too much uh, authentic American alcohol the whole trip back. He only had four Bud Lights. Kashmira lay on her bed alone. She could hear the sirens outside, and she brought her hand up to her neck. She lay awake, thinking of a breath without lungs, and a maggot filled corpse calling out her name. She grabbed her phone and quickly transferred this week's salary back home before thrusting her face into the hello. Sleep dragged its feet. Creepy lady, don't let her fool you. With Dr. Dane is the best we have. And before you lock in again, do you have any more questions? Well, about paperwork, I obviously won't use the same passport. We can set you up with a brand new name and identity, just as I did. As far as the world is concerned, Green and 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 Bo many of our customers just disappeared off the face of, of the world while names like Fendril just appeared out of the mystic mist. You've thought of everything. No, oh, no, what about the pills? Devlins, dissolve two of them in water, chug it all down before bed, or besides feeling sharp neck pain. What happens if I forget one day? Sharp neck pain. I mean it, this is a prescription you want to mess up. Those tablets keep your brain and body spinal cord or talking with one another until they get married. And uh, anatomically, you really don't want that conversation to stop. Okay, okay, I don't know, what should I do after it's all done? Live, of course. Experiment. Have fun. Look in a mirror. Don't look in a mirror. Try on new clothes. Go to bed, do drugs, enroll in college, or whatever else you want. Heck, we'd look good together. I could guide you around the whole thing and get you used to it all. I'd feel like the car sells when you bugs up next to you during this test drive. But this is permanent. Bad example. You get the idea. It'd be downright monstrous of me to just leave you adrift in this brave new world after getting you that far, wouldn't it?
Kashmira pulled the refrigerator in front of her hotel door and scattered several flakes all over the floor. It was the middle of the night. It was her new routine. Bojan was gone. It began. With the first actual show, Kashmira had actually felt proud of herself after that one. They brought in a bunch of viewers to watch and she figured it to be her first genuine interning experience. It was all scheduled for Christmas Day and her entire outfit rack felt original for once. Then the guests came backstage. They looked at models up and down, directing their questions to the tall man who leaped from model to model like a car salesman. She didn't know what the viewers had to say about her or what the tall man said about her, but she didn't notice the tall man deflecting her gaze away from Ambojan, as if as though he was unappealing or off limits. The next day, Bojan was accepted into another a fashion house in New York City. But that couldn't be, Ishmael's thought. Bojan hadn't even walked the runaway because of a wardrobe malfunction. What talent could he, he possibly have shown off? Bojan wasn't the only one. There were near a dozen transfers out, and near 50 transfers in. The new group came from the Philippines. Nobody spoke English, as expected. The tall man said that since they did so well the first time, they're going to have another showing next week. Kashmir is out at the hotel door. She still wearing the dress she had on for the show. She was first on the runway, but the tall man had kept the viewers away from her like she was a museum painting. The rancid apartment in Croatia seemed so welcoming now, and no amount of fury her father could muster could compare to every footstep outside the door. Kashmira turned her head and out the window and saw an airplane pass through the clouds. She could run ag again. This was in Croatia. She could easily get a cab to the nearest airport. She pulled out her phone, her old phone, and switched off the hotel's internet to use cell data. She pulled up the airport website and tried to buy a ticket. She was met with an error message. It was becoming clearer. Vandral and Danes had no qualms about letting its victims buy beer or, or send money to the family, but it certainly wouldn't permit buying an escape. Vandral and Danes couldn't do anything about cash, though, and there was an ATM in the lobby. Just a few meters away from a taxi drop-off point. It was one in the morning. Federal and Danes had provided her entire wardrobe, and she barely regretted not buying something, even a single sweater, to not draw attention to herself. She'd be making her getaway and runaway clothes. She'd buy something less outlandish at the airport. She slid the refrigerator a slight aside and left her room. She walked past the rooms of the under interns. She heard, heard some of them partying, cheering in creation and Filipina, you know, I don't know if that's the right word. Anyway, she heard a few talk with relatives gushing about their futures in the fashion industry. She made it to the elevator and found it empty. She rested the, went to the lobby and the doors closed. She was 18 stories away. Kashmir uh, Kovit Asevic stood in the elevator. The backs of her feet it itched against its shoe straps, and the elevator hummed as the cord sent it it's lying down the building. The elevator stopped at 16. The other stopped at the 16th floor and a tall man walked in, still wearing his aviators. He said nothing and the elevator continued. The elevator seemed to lose speed. Your name is Kreshmira Kovacevic, yes? The tall man asked. Yes. Are you unwell? You have rings under your eyes. Just stress. We'll have a doctor take a look at you tomorrow. They reached the 10th floor and a group of drunk interns got in. The elevator continued, sped up even, all the way down to the lobby. The workers were pulling the grand Christmas tree down. 
As the other interns got off, Gaspar eyed herself off the wall, fired for the wet, and then moved to by the door, just as he did. And then and she felt the grip on her shoulder. Her anchors burned as a cold hand reared her to the floor. The door or, or closed shut before scent and voice returned to her. The tall man said nothing and pressed the button for running the parking levels. The elevator moved too fast. Are you excited? This doesn't look like a hospital. This isn't medical service, my Barry. Technically, it's not even a service right now. Right now, it's beta testing. So, there could be glitches. No, we're simply testing how appealing the whole process is. So I ask again, Mardberry, are you excited? I am. God, this is surreal. What happened to my old body? It'll decompose. I want to turn into a tree. Understandable. Never hurts to go green. Do you want to do something after this is all done? Sure, you know what they say. New you, new year, new you. Dr. Dane, could you please put our good friend to sleep while I get his new suit? Kashmir woke up in, the, in her hotel room, sweating. She looked down at herself, covered in sweat. She looked at the clock, 101 in the morning. The fireworks were still going off outside and the lamp was still on, illuminating the American passport on the table and the shed clothes on the floor. She looked to... Her side and saw that budget no Arthur was still asleep. Quietly she swung herself out of bed and made her way into the bathroom. The sudden change in light made her eyelid its clamp shut for a moment, but she adjusted to it. She leaned into the mirror and brought a hand to her face, gently tracing finger upwards, leaving from her lips to her cheekbones before coming into rest at the bags in her eyes. They go away with good sleep, the doc told her, and here she was not getting it. She gripped the side edge of the mirror and pulled the cabinet open. Pushing her reflection aside to reveal two orange bottles, she took the fuller one to the left and deposited two tablets into her hand. They were pink, chalky discs, each about the size of a quarter. She flicked them into a cup of tap water and watched them fizz away into bubbles before pouring the whole thing down her throat. It tasted like egg, egg juice peaches. She put the bottle away and brought back the mirror. This time she leaned close so that her that her nose was only a few inches away and brushed away some hair from her forehead. The incision scar was healing nicely. Bojan's voice called from the bed, and the thing wearing crushed mirror curved her lips into a smile and walked out of the mirror's her sight. Like it always did and always will do, a lonely garbage truck lumbered down the roads as the morning sun rose, working with neon vests as hung from the back, talking about the game from last night, occasionally shooting waves at the early risers. The truck drove past as hundreds of homes and gobbled up hundreds of garbage bags and boxes. It made its way deep into West Virginia and scooped up a bulging plastic bag stinking of rotten flesh. Through the white plastic, one could see what looked like fleshy pink blobs all creamed inside together. But the worker didn't care. Butcher shop also were on the route too, and there was a stellar touchdown to uh, talk about. A truck resumed its its winded journey to the landfill. And Krishmira uh, Kovacevic could only dream. Looks like this was a story about someone named, uh, I'm going to call him Mira. Who uh, got their body taken for Green's experimental treatment to immortality. You're making your body rot away while you're trapped inside of it. Anyway. If you liked the video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. If you did not like the video, then you just wasted 45 minutes of your time. 
I'll see you tomorrow with, I'm guessing, season two of The End of Death. Or maybe something a little bit less depressing. We'll see how I feel then. Goodbye.